Hey everyone, it's Danny and welcome to this video. So as you can see, this is something very much different from what I usually do because I don't typically incorporate myself in my updates videos. However, I'm doing this because especially last year I've gotten a lot of comments from persons requesting to see who is behind the camera and I completely understand that because when I'm watching the videos and I'm actually seeing the person who is explaining whatever it is, it just feels like you have a better connection with that individual. So I've decided that I'm going to do a video where you're basically just going to be getting to know who I am rather than just the voice of the Jamaican girl behind the camera. But firstly, we want to talk about what is currently happening across the region. And we can see here that uh, there isn't much activity at all taking place uh, in the Caribbean. We see those passing clouds, some of those low-level clouds are making their way through parts of the northeastern Caribbean, possibly bringing some showers along with them. So if you're in sections of that area, the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, Puerto Rico, even go into uh, eastern Hispaniola, you might experience some rainfall activity or uh, you probably experience some of that activity earlier today and uh, looking over to the west we can see that build up of some shower and thunderstorm activity just off cuba right there but for the rest of the region not seen where much is uh going on right now beautiful sunshine this morning for many of us and then we're going to be taking a look at the rainfall totals and we're starting out with the gfs and so uh this was issued at zero z which is uh around 7 p.m eastern time so this is actually going out to tomorrow Eve. So uh, we can see here that the GFS is expecting that the Northern Caribbean is going to be receiving uh, some rainfall as we're going to be heading throughout this time frame here, or at least that is what is expected. And uh, we also see some of those higher totals expected for the Caribbean coast of Costa Rica and parts of Panama. But for most of the region, it is going to be remaining dry and sunny for the most part. And then the Euro model is sort of in agreement with this, showing a bit of lower totals for some areas, but nonetheless, uh, some rainfall activity expected across sections of the Northern Caribbean and also uh, down in the Southwest along the coast of some of those Central American American territories. So now let's go ahead and get back to that video. So my name is Danielle and I'm currently 18 years old and as a matter of fact we're in the month of May which is my birth month so I'm super happy about that. I'm going to be 19 on the 15th of May and that coincides with the start of the Pacific hurricane season which I get pretty excited about on an annual basis. So that's that. And if you're curious about my academics, I'm currently in my seventh year of high school. Uh, I did my CSEC examinations back in 2021 at the end of fifth form. And now I'm currently uh, about to do Unit 2 of the Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examinations, which is CAPE. Not easy. It's equivalent to A-levels and it is, it is not easy, guys, <laughs> but I'm managing, you know, so yeah. And uh, at my school, I currently serve as the Deputy Head Girl of 2022-2023. And uh, if you're curious about how I got into meteorology, that first began back in 2015. Uh, actually, let me give you guys a full story. So my mom, she always used to watch the Weather Channel and AccuWeather a lot. And sometimes my father and I would be teasing her about it, saying, oh, she's always so into the weather. And little did I know that couple years down the road, I would be aspiring to become a meteorologist. So uh, in 2015, I remember when I was seeing news about storms such as Erica and uh, Hurricane Joaquin. And then in 2016 was when my passion fully ignited with the passage of Matthew close to Jamaica in September, uh, actually it was October of that year, from September 28th and uh, lasted until October 10th. I still remember that. So. Uh, after that, I was just so into it. You would find me writing out a lot of information about different weather phenomena, all because I wanted to understand the dynamics of the atmosphere. So much so that uh, I was in seventh grade at the time, I was 12 years old, and uh, I researched meteorology and saw that physics was a big part of it. And seeing all those equations, uh, I was just scared because it was like, whoa, math is not my strongest point, but actually uh, I even began classes with the physics teacher at the time. I didn't do physics until ninth grade uh, as a subject, but I did a few classes back in seventh grade just because I was serious about wanting to become a meteorologist and, you know, achieving that goal. So I did that 
and eventually when I did physics in CSEC, I got a grade one, I got a distinction, I'm so happy. And it is one of my loved subjects now. But of course, my all-time favorite has to be geography and I'm not doing that in Cape, but I'm doing environmental science, which is as close as it gets and I actually prefer environmental science because I like to focus more on the scientific aspect of Earth rather than human interaction and Earth. I mean, I like it too, but not as much. So uh, that's just some basic information about me and fun fact, I am very short. I'm like five feet in height. So yeah, uh, when many persons see me, especially at school, uh, especially the younger students in like seventh and eighth grade, when they would come next to me, they would be so surprised that I am so short in height. It's just the power of genetics. So yeah. And um, that's just a bit of information about me, but I wanted to talk about hurricane season. So the hurricane season commences on the 1st of June, although there was a chance that we could see pre-season activity, which simply means we could see a storm before June 1st. And uh, as a result, we all have to be prepared, especially as individuals in the Caribbean, because we live in a region that is prone to being impacted by tropical cyclone activity on an annual basis. And so even though there is that El Nino expectation, I mean, it's pretty much likely now as we head into later this year, and even though that would normally suppress activity, it only takes one single cycle. Sometimes it takes less than a cycle. Sometimes it takes a depression or a tropical wave to result in a lot of flooding. So uh, with any landfall and tropical cyclone, the problem is always with the rainfall and systems as weak as disturbances are enough to produce rainfall with staggering totals that can result in life-threatening flooding. So I want you guys to please be aware of that and please ensure to take all necessary precautions and make the necessary preparations as we're going to be heading into the 2023 season. That includes having all, you, uh, all your important files and documents in something that is safe and waterproof and reachable as well. So in the event of an emergency, it doesn't even have to be a flood. It could be another natural disaster such as an earthquake. You can just grab and go should in case your area is affected by such disaster, hopefully not. But of course, we always have to think about measures to mitigate the effects of them when they happen because they're not preventable. It's nature and we cannot control nature. So that is one step. Another is uh, if you have your home and you know you have a lot of trees around. We love trees and I'm all for trees. However, sometimes when strong winds occur, they can blow off branches that can cause damage to life and property and we don't want that. So uh, it is important to trim your trees as well. You don't have to completely cut them down, but just trim them down to a size where they won't do too much damage in such events. And uh, of course, it is good to always have some cash on standby, uh, just in case there is a natural disaster. Because if there is a hurricane or even a storm and the power goes out, you know, those ATMs won't be working. So it's good to have ready cash. Uh, put away specifically for the case of a natural disaster. So even though I'm kind of focusing on the hurricane season, I want to be inclusive because it's not just hurricanes that we are at risk to, guys. So that is what I wanted to share with you. And of course, I'm going to keep talking about all this. And I'm going to be giving all the necessary updates as time goes by. So if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so so that you never miss an important update. And that is pretty much it for right now. So I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. And of course, remember to always be with the lines.